Hello, my dear scholars, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very glad to share my latest research result with you. Due to the pandemic of COVID-19, we have to meet over internet. Okay. My topic today is the watermarking technology for deep learning in texture property protections. And firstly, I want to introduce the motivations and the significance of my research. As we know that the deep learning is widely used in many fields, such as the face recognition and disease diagnosis, education, and so on. So, if you want to get、uh, AI models, that is not an easy work. The gradients of a successful deep learning models usually include a heavy work of labeling and training data, and professional experts with high-performance computers. But once you have obtained the deep learning models, it is easy to copy away. So. How do you protect the ownership of your models, and how to avoid your model being stolen and abused? So the significance of my research is to meet this case. The IP. Protection schemes should meet some requirements, such as the ownership ID should be embedded into the deep learning model deliberately, and such embedding cannot influence the fidelity of the original model, and such embedding should be. Illegible and imperceptible. And one in the case of the IP authentications, we have to extract the deliberate ownership ID from the model in case of IP issues. And this watermarking should resist machine learning based attack. An idea watermarking mechanism demands. The first one is the watermarking technology is to identify deep learning models distinctly from other models. Each model has a distinct watermarking as its ID. The watermarking is invisible to the users. So extract the related watermarking requires the corresponding secret keys, and this secret key guarantee guarantees the security of the watermarking. So, how should we approach it? There are two approaches. The first is the white box watermarking, and the second is. Black box watermarking. In the white box watermarking, it assumes that the model parameters and other internal details are public, and the watermark was embedded in the model parameters by using a parameter regularizer without significantly changing the distribution of the model parameters. So in white box water make markings, we have to download the models from the internet and analyze 
the parameters inside the model. So sometimes the model is stored remotely. For example, stored in the clouding. So the white box watermarking has that limit. We have no way to download that models. So the, the other approach is black box watermarking scheme. The black box watermarking was embedded in the way of machine learnings. So in this watermarkings, we need to prepare the extra data site that contains the features of a watermarking. And we use this extra data set to train the models and to ensure that this model contains a typical features as watermarking. So this extra data set is treated as trigger set. And this flowchart illustrates the scheme of black box watermarking. And you can see the first here, this training data. The training data contains the original functions of the models. And the next, we can see these uh, airplanes labels. And this is so-called samples in the trigger set, or we say the extra data. And this is a revised original data. So you can see that this image has a text on the image. And this adding new text provide another feature. So the original data set and the extra data set mixed together to feed the neural network. That means we let, we make the neural network to obtain the feature both in the original function and the extra functions. And this extra function is a black box watermarking knowledge. So in the case of verifications, we just use one of the data from the trigger set and input this samples to invoke the network to uh, deliberate behavior. So the users can verify the ownership because the trigger set contains a special behaviors, special features and that obtained by the neural networks. So to achieve that, we have to meet the challenges. The first is the trigger set construction. So the even conventional scheme, the trigger set construction are manually and time consuming. Some text are added on the images, so it's manually. So we have to design a new way to approach this automatically. The second is, in the conversion way, the noises and the bands 
are added on the images that will be easily forged. When the user input a trigger set sample to the models, so the other people, for example, the hackers may obtain the, these samples and to forge a similar date and which is is outside the trigger set and the hacker want to use this similar samples to trigger our models so the conventional watermarking scheme cannot resist the fraudulent ownership claim attack so that is means cannot resist as hackers attack by using a similar data samples to trigger our models so the next so we meet these challenges in my research I employ the CGAN network to generate the trigger set data sample and this CGAN network is invented by Goodfellow in the year of 2014 and the discriminator is on the above and the generator in below and these are the data sets generated from the CGAN you can see that the images the image is a handwriting number OCR project minist data set so this the first image it looks like the number 4 and it's also similar to 9 so we use the C again to generate this ambiguous images so we deliberate to generate the data on the boundaries of the classifications and we use such data as the trigger set so you can see this this 4 and 9, 2 and 7, 6 and 8, 4 and 6 is ambiguous image date so next thing the algorithm one is the trigger generations we use this algorithm to generate the trigger samples noted as NK here and input two data set noted as DP and DS which are the two classifications data and in this algorithm one we use DPDS to train CGAN1 and CGAN2 and then we exchange the discriminator among the CGAN1 and CGAN2 to generate the trigger data samples and use a while loop until the possibility of NK with labeled with labeling LK equals to possibility of the data sample NK with the label of LKS so the NK is the data sample on the boundary of the DP and DS classification after we obtained the data samples of the trigger set the next thing is labeling automatically so we employed this codec logistic map which is a one dimensional iterate equations and this is the beautification diagram 
of the logics map and we use a specifies the parameter mu in the 3.7 to 4 to make this sequence x as a cortex sequence so why do I imply this logic map to generate randomness? The first is the sensitivity to initial value and parameters. That means we can treat initial values in logic map as a secret key. Once a little change in the initial values, we will get a totally different sequences and I we use these sequences to label the data set samples randomly so the next thing is unpredictable cortex sequence and this unpredictable cortex sequence provide our scheme uh, unpredictable labeling so the hex cannot predict out the label regulations of a scheme. The uniqueness of calling sequence guarantees our scheme to recur when we use the same secret keys and this the sequence as a calling sequence can be replayed when you verify your watermarking and these two images two figures show us that the data distribution of randomness of logic map and the algorithm tool is a trigger annotations so we use algorithm tool to label our data trigger set data samples and we can see the cortic values of nk x nk x nk noted as a sequence of cortic sequence and we divide this x nk into multi classifications so there's a binary classification CK1 C CK equals L1 and L2 L1 L2 are the binary classifications and then we use this one divided by mu at this point to give the classifications of the sequence because this codex sequence are float numbers so I use this sequence randomness to label our data set of tr trigger set samples and this flow chart is illustrate the our proposed scheme the water marking schemes the first is the pretend generator G in the C GAN to generate the trigger samples which are on the boundary of classification and then we use the algorithm tool we call it cortic labeler to annotate the trigger samples and to form the trigger set so the next thing is that we combine the original training data set and the trigger set together and fit this data set to our models and these models can learn the two kinds of features one is the original functions and the other is the watermarking features 
As for the networks, our models, the layout of the model is similar to the original models without any watermarkings. The input and the output are identical. And the layers of the layout of the hidden layers are the similar. Basically the same. So when we want to verify the watermarking, just input one of the samples, data samples of the trigger set, and this data and this data samples invoke the models a typical behavior. And we just compare the output of the model with the corresponding label classification we have already trained to the model. Then if the labels are identical, that indicates which indicates that this model belongs to us. So we can see the next false experiment fidelity analysis on minister models. We employed minister as examples so we can see the result accuracy is very high and this 16 3264 that has a 99% accuracy. So this original model refers to the model without any watermarkings, the original model. And this is the models with watermarkings has a high accuracy. And the next is effectiveness. And this is the result of the watermarking extension rate. For the original model, due to these models without any watermarking, so the corresponding watermark extension rate is very low. But those models with watermarking has a very high extraction rate. So the next we can see the fine tuning attacks. Some models are usually revised by using fine tuning. So our watermarking should resist the fine tuning attacks. So we can see before tuning and after tuning, the accuracy, the accuracy and extrusion rate, watermark extrusion rate, are showing these tables. We can see that the models with watermarking has a high accuracy and high watermarking extrusion rate. And the next is the compression attacks. The adversary may deploy a compression attack on our models to remove our watermarkings. So these tables illustrate that when the proofing rate is high to 60%, so the model accuracy and the water extension rate is very high. So that means our scheme can protect the models. And the next, the three tables shows that our scheme can resist overwriting attacks. The so overwriting attack refers to the attack that the hackers may use another watermarking dataset 
to retrain the models and they want to erase our watermarkings and embed his fake watermarking inside the model. So we can see that in the experiment results, we can see that when the overwriting stress is low, our model accuracy is still high and the extraction rate is high enough. It's reached 87.5%. But one, the hackers overwriting strengths greatly and our exertion rate is low. At the same time, you can see that the model accuracy is dropped greatly. So that means the hackers attacks our watermarkings. So the result is the extraction watermarking rate dropped as well as the model accuracy is low. So this model is available to use. So that means our watermarking scheme can protect the model until the model is available. So that indicates that our scheme has a good secure performance. Okay. This is my report. Thank you for your listening. Goodbye.